I wanted to make that light. Whoa. All right. Anyways, it is Sunday, November 19th. The time is 2.43 p.m. and the temperature right now is around five degrees Celsius. I'm here. As that noisy bus passes on the east end of the Parkdale neighborhood. This here is Dufferin Street. And I just had lunch at Matt's Burger Lab. And once the light changes, I'll be crossing over to the east side of Dufferin Street and walking over to Joe Schuster Way. Hello. That's me. Oh, wow. Nice to meet you. Viewer recognizing me from Argentina. There's the 929 Suffering Dufferin bus. So I'm just going to walk over to Joe Schuster Way. And I'll take a little detour along the way to check out some neat artwork. And that'll take me down into Liberty Village. Then I'll walk through Liberty Village and I think end up at Exhibition Station. See, like, for example, yeah, look. I just recorded a walk through Parkdale and Roncesvilles. And one last look north up Dufferin Street. And this was a route suggested by a viewer, one that I covered on a live stream before, or at least the first part of this walk. That's the very trendy West Queen West neighborhood just off in the distance. And a rail corridor cuts through here just on the left. So the first part of this one is going to be a bit on the quieter side. This is a mostly residential neighborhood. In fact, it's oddly residential. So noticeable lack of retail and that sort of thing through here. And I think it's this street here that I want to go right on. I think these condo townhomes might be about 15 to 20 years old. This is formerly an industrialized area. Oh, it's new enough that they don't have their own mailboxes. They have those public mailboxes. Look at the colors on this Tesla. So I'm currently heading south on Laidlaw Street. And Joe Schuster Way, where I was, was named after who else but Joe Schuster, the Canadian comic book artist, best known for creating Superman. And he used to work at the Toronto Star. And Clark Kent. I think originally worked at the Daily Star, which they later renamed the Daily Planet. That was actually modeled after the Toronto Star. There's a Chevy Cobalt bumpin'.
It is very peaceful and quiet through here. We do have the Dufferin bus line just to the west, the King Streetcar line just south of here, and the Queen Streetcar line just to the north. But this mural, or I guess rather collection of various art is pretty new. If you go on Google Street View, this was not here the last time the Street View cameras came around. So I think what I'll do is I'll head over to King Street and there's a pedestrian bridge I can cross and walk through the heart of Liberty Village. And this here is Rita Cox Park, named after a school teacher. Seems to be a lot of dogs on this artwork. And the last time I walked through here, it was this quiet. These sort of planned communities never end up having that sort of vibrant feel to them. There's a little football just chilling in the middle of the grass there. All right, so this will take us back up to Joe Schuster Way and I'll just follow that down to King Street West. There's a neat view of the sand tower. These are the little pockets of the city that I'm perhaps guilty of not exploring enough in these videos. I have walked up behind these condos though and recorded that in the past. I got a view over the rail corridor. There's Lamport Stadium. The dome over its plane surface that was built back in the mid 70s back when the Toronto Wolfpack were a thing I remember seeing them play a game there unfortunately the pandemic killed that enterprise but that was a rugby league or a rugby team that played in a UK league There's a McDonald's, which I guess makes up for the one that recently closed just west of here at King and Dufferin. That intersection also lost a Burger King to redevelopment. All right, this is east on King Street West now.
side and yeah. their lobby. Yeah, this is our lobby. And where I'm going, Exhibition Station. I could get to by making it right at this street or the next one. I think that is Jefferson. The next one being Atlantic. And this wouldn't be a very long walk. That streetcar is only going as far as Roncesville. It's not even going all the way up to Dundas West Station. Noting that the TTC announcement called it Roncesville's and not Roncesville. Let's cross here. And I could head south into the heart of Liberty Village, but we're going to walk over and check out that pedestrian bridge. And the reason for the bridge is that between this access point here at Atlantic and King and the next nearest access point to Liberty Village, it's about 800 meters away. There's a rail corridor that slices through here that cuts off access from King Street. That would be this rail corridor right here. That's the reason for the pedestrian bridge we're heading to. not often I get past. She must be hightailing it somewhere. just kind of a quiet weekend afternoon. I don't think there's anything in particular that's exciting going on in the city this weekend. The Santa Claus Parade is next Sunday and I think I'll be out recording that. Oh, my camera on zoom. This is Sudbury Street coming up. Yeah. 
And there's that bridge I talked about as a go train whizzes by. So you can see the rail corridor there severs much of Liberty Village from King Street. And with a lot of people relying on the King Streetcar to take them into the financial district, which is straight ahead off in the distance. Just getting to King Street was kind of a pain in the butt. Because if you lived on the other side of those rail tracks, you'd either have to walk all the way to Atlantic Avenue in that direction up to King, or to Strawn over in that direction. So this oddly designed bridge was approved back in 2018. There's the bike lanes on Duro Street. This connects to the new cycle track on Wellington. This was built at a cost of $11.5 million. And controversially, the elevators didn't work, I think for several years after it first opened. There was also a fire here. It was known for loitering and vandals. It's a view out to King Street. Oh, they've got these mirrors up here. look to the west. The glass here is filthy. Can't really get much of a view. And to the east, these rail tracks will feed into Union Station and merge with the Lakeshore Line. You can see the next nearest crossing point all the way over there at Strawn. trains rowing by, but I don't think we're going to be able to see it. Looks like an up express train. Let's head down to the Liberty Market building. I'll cut through that and then make my way over to Atlantic Avenue and then to Exhibition Station, which is being revamped. This is a former industrial area, a number of Big industrial companies were here. 
We have a toy manufacturer. Inglis, an appliance company. And some of the older buildings have survived. And the newer buildings have kind of tried to maintain that aesthetic, but not quite. This is considered a working professional neighborhood for the most part. I don't mind it. It's a bit generic feeling. I think they are going for kind of a Brooklyn vibe and missed the mark. Or more like a Dumbo vibe. Brooklyn's huge. But we'll go walk through the Liberty Market building. That was an old flour mill. There's an oddly suburban style strip mall. A grocery store and parking. It's not exactly an urban paradise given how car centric this neighborhood is. Well, the Ossington bus runs through here. That looks like they're gonna squeeze some more towers onto this lot. That sun is nasty straight ahead. Oh, there's a 929 Dufferin Express bus. And a vintage vet that looks pretty badass. There's the Brazen Head Pub. I've been there a few times. This is East Liberty Street and Liberty Street, just on the right. I forget at one point, Liberty Street becomes East Liberty Street. This is the Liberty Market Building, which is an old flour mill that operated from 1881 to 1902 company later became a machinery business. And things like steam engines and pumping engines were assembled here. And now it is this. You can see they probably had intentions for this to come across as a lot grander than it ended up being. It maintained the old rail line. And there is an Alouette Go. That place is fantastic. I've been going to the one at Young and Eglinton quite often. All right, do I head up to Liberty Street, which is more interesting, or do I take the quote unquote walkway, as it is hilariously called here? Leading you right into a parking lot. 
of the action is going on up there. How in the HE double hockey sticks is this a walkway? Oh, well, we've made it to Atlantic Avenue. And just south of here, a massive expansion. Uh, the exhibition sta station, almost at stadium, is taking place. They're expanding the concourse to accommodate not only the Lakeshore West Go Line, but also in a, a future Ontario Line station. That'll be the western terminus of the Ontario Line. And the idea is for this area to be classified as a transit-oriented neighborhood. That subway line is at least a decade away though. There's going to be a really big impressive canopy over the station. And there you can see in the background BMO Field, home to the Toronto Argonauts of the CFL, and the FC, who were the primary tenants of Major League Soccer. And you can see a new staircase. They have already made a lot of progress here. Some of the renderings look really neat. But what I'm going to do is head on over to the streetcar loop. There goes a the go train. So that is leading me over there, but you could head down and take a look at the platform. Oh, they have definitely changed this up. And they've made a fair bit of progress. This is the platform one area. This is where you catch the GO train, a commuter rail line that will whisk you out to the suburbs. Frequency on line one is actually quite good, or on the Lakeshore line. But you used to be able to just walk along the platform and dip underneath to the other side, but... It looks like... <laughs> We have to call this diversion. If you're a transit geek, this might make a great area to make a video. I think there's something like 12,000 people within walking distance to the station. And over 17,000 jobs in the area. Or at least there's projected to be when all is said and done. So this will be a major transit hub. 
And I don't even know if the 509 Harbor Front Streetcar is running. There's BMO Field standing very near where Exhibition Stadium used to be. So I was kind of thinking maybe I'd do a 509 Harbor Front Streetcar video, but it looks like I might be met by a bus here. It's a bit of a downer. They are running buses along it last weekend. This is where they hold the Canadian National Exhibition every year. Catch the 511 Bathurst streetcar that'll, I was going to say whisk you up, but slowly take you up to Bathurst Station or the harbor front over to Union. That would be my preferred way. Whew, you can smell the manure. She lives close to where Gray and I live, like not, not too far. I saw buses waiting up ahead. Oh, is that a 509 Harbor Front? Anywho, I hope you enjoyed this one, walking from Queen and Dufferin along Joe Schuster Way with a little detour through Liberty Village to here at Exhibition Station. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna maybe make that streetcar video. There's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides and there is a super thanks button appearing below the video if you wish to say thanks that way. Anywho, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Yoink!